early in my career, I think it was my uh, third job after graduating from college, was with a large conglomerate family business. The business, I worked in a division, actually I worked in a business unit inside of a division, that's how big it was. And it was a very traditional uh, organization. This is back in the early 1980s. And um, I was excited to show up there. I mean, again, it was a, it was a global company, and great, great benefits for me. I was just newly married. So I thought I had really, um, um, you know, hit the jackpot as far as a job goes. And as I started uh, working, I realized it was a very autocratic organization. There was uh, a lot of political fiefdoms in the company, managers managed by fear and intimidation. And I had just recently um, left the, the army as a young officer. And so I kind of thought, well, maybe being in large corporate America was similar to the military. So I just kind of took it as standard. Um, but then I started becoming a little bit more concerned as, as uh, people were resigning, whether it was senior staff or junior staff. And that's when I started really understanding that maybe it is true that people don't quit organizations, they leave their bosses. So, but looking at that terminal, I knew deep down something was wrong, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. The one thing I did know, which was interesting, is this particular business unit had never made a profit. So eventually there was a change in leaders. And I'll never forget it. It was about two years after I'd been working there. This new leader came into my little business unit, um, which was predominantly, I, you know, we were blue collar organization and he showed up in his three piece suit. I remember, I, I don't know why I remember this, but he had wingtip shoes on. And we met in the warehouse, dusty old warehouse. And he took his jacket off and, um, sat down with all of us and just started asking lots of questions. I mean, lots of questions. It was impressive to me. I mean, I had never talked to the former CEO before. I saw him only one time at a trade show, I think it was. But this guy on his first week was here in my operation talking to hundreds of employees. I was impressed. I later learned that he wasn't only talking with employees, he was talking with customers and suppliers. He even engaged with the community leaders that we were operating in. Every stakeholder he could find, he talked to, and he was asking questions. Very impressive to me. Well, since the division really never had a history of making profit, what he did is he focused tirelessly on one thing. That was culture. He focused on the employees. Well, to tell you what happened is he was so focused that he invited me to a retreat. It was two one-week retreats off-site. I was the youngest person there. And I can't, we, you're not going to believe it, but we worked on writing our value statement and our vision statement for two weeks. It was amazing. But it was engaging and it was thrilling for me. And I got back to my job and I noticed something different right away. Employees were more engaged. I was more engaged. I was excited to go to work every day. Uh, our quality was improving. Employee retention was record high. Every, that first year that that new leader was there, we broke even. We still didn't turn, turn a profit, but we broke even. But do you know that he inspired everyone to stretch and improve and actually take ownership, think like an owner? And after that first year that he was there where we broke even, for the next 24 years I was there with that company, we were profitable. We made big profits, the highest profits for the industry. So I think possibly John Maxwell really has it right. Everything rises and falls on leadership. 